Hello internet. Thanks for tuning in into Lifestyle Infinite. I am back with another PC build video. This has been a long time coming. After planning for about 5 years, cancelling several times due to unavoidable circumstances. Now it's finally here. My very own 16 terabyte NAS. I am a data holder and I know I need help, but do I want to hear about it? No. With that out of the way, I have been storing data for quite some time now. Started off with CDs, then moved on to DVDs, later moved on to external hard drives and external SSDs. I have about 1000 plus optical discs and 4 TVs of hard drives and more than 2 TVs of SSDs. I need a safe place to store and consolidate my data, to manage redundant data and most importantly to make sure it doesn't succumb to bit rot. In order to extract the data from optical media, I built one ingest station using optical drives and a Xeon processor in one of my previous video. Video is out now, please check it out. For the time being, as per my calculation, 8 TB is enough. So I went with 16 TB. Assuming 4 TB will be blocked for redundancy and 4 TB will still be available. For the operating system, I will go with TrueNAS scale. Coming to the part selection, for this build, I will be using Intel Core i3-12100. It's a 4-core, four 4-thread four processor. Paired with Asus Prime H610M E D4 motherboard. The choice of RAM is no-brainer. 2 8GB sticks of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 3200MHz. For the boot drives, I went with Samsung SSD 980-250GB and Kyoxia Exercia 250GB. Coming to the start of the show, for the storage I am using 4 Western Digital Red Plus 4TB hard disks. This is a first, we will not be using the motherboard's Ethernet port. Instead, we will be adding Intel Gigabit PCIe network adapter EXPI9301 CTBLK. More on this later. Powering everything by Cooler Master MWE Bronze V2 450 Watt power supply. The case is an interesting choice. I am using Antec P101S. Let's start the build. I went with Intel Core i3. 12100 as I will only be using this server for NAS related activities and occasionally as a Jellyfin server. Not planning to run any other services so this much processing power is plenty for my use case. Also this has integrated GPU and has a lower power consumption. It checks all the boxes for me. As a bonus, it comes with a decent stock cooler in box. Coming to the choice of motherboard, this was the cheapest motherboard I could find with a couple of M.2 NVMe slots. As I will be running the operating system in RAID 1 or mirrored configuration with two M.2 NVMe SSDs to prevent catastrophic failure if the boot SSD dies. So, this was the only option. Sadly, this motherboard comes with 4 SATA ports only. I would have preferred going with a motherboard with 6 SATA ports, but I was able to find none in same price category as well as decent compatibility and reliability. For the RAM, I went with 8GB sticks because 4GB sticks are more expensive than 8GB now for some weird reason. Maybe it's a niche product category now and I used two sticks just for redundancy. 
if one fails the server will still be operational coming to the choice of boot ssds i have read on the true nas forums that if boot drive fails it's a nightmare to recover the data and set everything back up and running for added peace of mind i am running the operating system in raid 1 replicating the contents on two separate ssds ssds fail without any warning just in case if one fails the operating system and its configuration is safe for added peace of mind i am using two separate ssds from different manufacturers known good brands samsung known for its performance Kioxia, known for its reliability. This also eliminates the probability of getting two faulty SSDs from the same faulty batch. I paused at a random point in this video where you least expected. I just have one question. Why none of you are subscribed? Please subscribe, it's free. A little sub would have went a long way. Now back to the video. Coming to the most expensive component of the build the enterprise grade spinning hard drives. This was no surprise. These four terabyte Western Digital Red Plus drives costs an arm and a leg. This is the primary reason why this build took so much time to complete. This took a lot of research to decide which hard drive to choose in terms of reliability and read write performance. Here, WD Red Plus takes the cake. These are continuous magnetic recording aka CMR drives. Stay away from WD Reds. They cost marginally less but uses shingled magnetic recording aka SMR which is significantly slower. Also stay away from Seagate drives. They are prone to failure. Another good contender was the Toshiba N300 drives but they were hard to get. I am using four four terabyte drives and i will be running my server in raid c1 configuration hopefully i will get around 10 and a half terabytes of storage board yet good this system will be running in headless state meaning there will be no screens keyboard mouse connected after the initial setup is completed it will just run 24 7 like any other appliance like a fridge or a router the only means of communicating with this server is via network these consumer motherboards are not designed to handle 24 7 network traffic reliably especially the realtek ethernet controllers which comes with cheaper motherboards also no one needs it for day-to-day -day tasks for average users there are bursts of activity not a sustained load on the Ethernet controller. If sustained load is placed on these Ethernet controllers, they overheat and glitches out. As a user, you will see frequent connection breaks. This is not acceptable for a NAS. Its sole purpose is to reliably transfer data. It's also frustrating to debug a device running in a headless mode. I have seen Intel NICs are being used in enterprise environment. After a lot of research, I settled for a third-party Chinese NIC using Intel EXPI 9301 CT chipset. I could not get my hands on a new or defurbished original Intel manufactured NIC. As the chipset is genuine Intel one, it's fine. If you also wish to go through the same route, I would suggest checking the chipset IC on the NIC thoroughly, as well as testing the card in a running system within the return period before deploying it in the NAS. It will save you from a boatload of trouble. The power supply is a no-brainer. Cooler Master MWE Bronze V2 450. Reputed brand, reliable unit, more than enough power headroom, fits within budget. Coming to the case. This case is one of the rare gem I found about 5 years back while planning for this build. I have purchased this case and been holding it from 2020. It was a wise decision. I was not able to spot another one since then. The ideal case for NAS with plenty of 3.5 inch drive sleds, plenty of filters, 4 120mm fans, inbuilt fan controller with dedicated hardware fan control, pretty rare. 
entire case has soundproof padding in the interior it is dead silent even when the fan is at full tilt zero rgb zero bling that's what is required of a server i don't want a light show 24 7 in my room only the usb ports are illuminated and the power and hard drive activity leds all in tasteful white this case is not just heavy it's heavy af i lift so a little weight does not bother me but this is heavy on another level it shows they have not cheaped out on the amount of metal goes into this temps wise even after running 24 7 it's no more than 15 degrees from ambient temperature don't forget about the ups never run a nas without a ups this is not an average desktop not shutting down gracefully has consequences here you might lose all your data if any important tasks like resilvering or scrubbing is in progress i have i already have a apc 600 va ups in my rack i will be using this later i am planning to upgrade this to a 1100 va one i tried building this server with easily available and mostly budget components without cutting much corners as of editing this video this nas is operational for more than two months now and it has been running without any issues i wish i was able to build this nas earlier almost 30 percent of my data in optical disks and 10 percent of data in ssd succumb to bitrot you can't resurrect the dead at least most of my memories are recovered and everything is consolidated in this server no more fumbling to find the right drive or disk to access a particular memory or data this is your sign to build an ass during idle it consumes about 50 watts from the wall so i don't worry about power bill to blow away my pockets thanks for being there with me till the end like the video if you liked it or got to know something useful a sub if you loved it it helps the channel a lot i am working on more content like this so stay tuned peace out